So you want to write and publish a scientific paper or an academic paper, and you want to publish it in a peer-reviewed journal. I'm going to talk you through the process of how to write that paper and what it is that goes into the various sections of the paper. So basically papers have got a number of sections, there's the title and abstract, there's the introduction and background, there's the methods, results, discussion and conclusions. I'm going to talk to you about what goes into each of those sections. Let's start by talking about the title. Now the title needs to be about 15 words or less. Right? That's not a lot of space, you've got to get to the point quite quickly. The things that you want to include in the title are firstly the purpose, what is the question that you addressed? Secondly, the scope, what are the edges of this thing? If you, if you addressed a particular population group, say that. If it included a particular time frame, say that. Some of the time you want to include the methods that you used. So if it was a cohort study, for example, you might want to include that in the title. This is all information that is useful to the reader if, they, if they're trying to make a decision whether or not they're going to read your paper. Things to avoid, don't put in acronyms, don't use abbreviations, don't ever use exclamation marks, keep it nice and professional and you'll have a great title. Next, let's talk about the abstract. Now, the abstract is usually about 300 words. Again, it's not a lot of space, you wanna be concise. There are different types of ab abstracts. Uh, what I'm gonna to talk to you about is one that's called the informative abstract, that's the most common type of abstract, and it follows a certain format and we're just gonna get into that. Of course, you're gonna include the purpose of the paper and, and you're gonna have an overview of the methods and the main findings, the conclusions and the recommendations. Importantly, you're not gonna have any discussion. So you're not gonna critique or evaluate the work. You're not gonna include any subjective interpretation, no speculation, no references to other works or other publications. You're gonna keep it nice and factual. You're gonna write in the past tense because this is reporting on a study that's already been completed. And you're gonna do the whole thing in about 300 words. Now let's talk about the introduction and background. When you write the introduction and background, what you want to get out of this is you want the reader to keep reading. To do that, what you want to do is provide context. In other words, with reference to existing literature, you're going to tell them what we know and what we don't know in this particular subject area. And in the context of what we don't know, you're going to introduce your research question, the purpose of your study, the question that you're going to answer. And when they read that, they're going to want to carry on reading. Next, we're going to talk about the methods, the results, the discussion and conclusions. Before we do, I want to say a big thank you to Biomed Central or BMC for sponsoring this video. BMC is a publishing company that publishes open access journals. And that means that the full text of anything that they publish is available for free to anybody anywhere in the world. BMC are the publishers of Globalization and Health, which is a journal that I'm the chief editor of. And I can honestly say, having worked with them for many, many years, that they're a company with integrity. I'm extremely impressed with them. And I really believe that they're making the world a better place. So go to biomedcentral.com or click on the link in the description below and check them out. Now let's talk about the methods. If you want your research to be taken seriously, you need the reader to understand exactly how it is that you undertook the research and drew the conclusions that you did in fact, you need the methods to be in so much detail that if they wanted to repeat the study themselves to generate the same conclusions and results that you did, they would be able to. Now, what your method section looks like depends largely on the type of research that you've undertaken. So method sections in qualitative research look very different to method se sections in, in quantitative research. What I'm gonna be talking about here applies mostly to quantitative research, but the basic principles apply to any paper. Here's what must be included. You need to state your, your study question or hypothesis, right? You need to include your study design. So was it a cohort study? Was it a case control study? Is this secondary data analysis? Was this content analysis of interview data, et cetera, et cetera. Next, you wanna talk about your data. Did you collect the data yourself? If so, how? What tool did you use? Has the reliability and the validity of this tool been established? How did you identify relevant variables? If this was routinely collected data, like hospital data or census data, or if you accessed available data from existing surveys or ongoing studies, how did you access it? How was it stored? Was it anonymized or de-identified? Did you have permission to access it? Describe the data in more detail. In other words, uh, if, if it's sample data, what was the sample size? How did you decide on that size? Uh, describe the variables of interest, the number of observations, if appropriate. How you analyzed the data. What software did you use? What statistical tests did you apply? What assumptions did you make? Highlight any methodological limitations and describe how it is that you addressed them. And if it's appropriate, state that you acquired ethical approval for your study. Now let's talk about the results. 
Everything about your paper revolves around the results. And for that reason, I'm going to suggest that you write the results first, especially if you're working with co-authors. So you may have collaborators, you may be working with a statistician, you may have a supervising author. What you want to do is you want to draft the results and the tables and the text of the results. You want to circulate that and you want to get agreement on the results before you write the rest of the paper. And the reason is, the results can change. In other words, people might suggest that you include certain aspects of the study or remove certain other aspects of the study. If you've written the entire paper, everything else has to change if the results change because everything revolves around the results. So get that finalized, get it agreed, get it ironclad, get that signed off before you write anything else. Now you start writing. You write in a logical manner and make explicit reference to any of the tables and figures included. You want to place the tables and figures as close as possible for the, to the first time that they're referred to in the text. Don't discuss the results. Don't provide explanations. Don't provide any speculation. Don't interpret them. Don't explain them. Don't hypothesize. Keep the results nice and factual. Now, don't ignore any negative findings. Include any negative results, but don't try to explain them. Not at this point. That's for the discussion. The discussion. This is by far my favorite part of any paper, because in the discussion, you're not only going to reiterate your findings, but you're going to explain them and interpret them and hypothesize and speculate. This is where you bring your thoughts and ideas into the paper. You're going to start your discussion off by reiterating your research question and given your findings, state what you believe the answer to that question is. Now remember, don't introduce any new data or any new results in the discussion. The discussion has to reflect on the results that have already been presented in your paper. You need to explain and interpret your results in the context of the literature that you identified in the introduction and background. In other words, are your findings consistent with what other people had said? And does your data fill one of the gaps in knowledge that you identified? So you want to show how your work has added something to the body of knowledge and understanding on the topic. You also want to reflect on the implications of your findings, maybe in terms of practical applications or public policy. And of course, you want to acknowledge the limitations of your study and you want to discuss those limitations and the implications of those limitations to your results. And the more you do that, the more you demonstrate that you understand the limitations, the more credibility your results will have. And in that context, you also want to consider and discuss any alternative explanations for your findings. Definitely discuss any negative findings and consider the impact on your conclusions. And then talk about next steps. What are the implications of your findings in terms of suggestions for future research? And finally, there's the conclusion and recommendation section. This is where you get to tell the reader, so what? What is the point of all of this? You want to help the reader understand why your research matters. So what you want to do is you want to state the answer to the research question that you asked and state any recommendations that can be made as a result of your findings. Now, as you can imagine, I've only been able to scratch the surface in terms of what you need to know to write a good paper. If you want to learn more, then go to learnmore365.com. I've got a course there that digs deep on all of these issues. And again, a big thank you to BMC for sponsoring this video. I'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already.